Hi. So far, everything we have done has been reassuringly finite. All our functions have been terminating, all our data types are built up from constructors, so you can always start from nothing and then you apply one after another until you're done. But I don't want to get into the philosophical question if the universe is infinite or not, but it's certainly sometimes useful to model things as if it was infinite. Right. So, for example, if you're trying to model a file, then maybe you can model it as an infinite bit stream because for all you know, this file is generated uh, bit by bit from some random number generator hooked up to a nuclear reactor, something like this. Or maybe you want to model a, an operating system which just keeps going and going and never terminates. Uh, so you might say that, well, you can't do this in type theory then because you just said that everything is finite and terminating. Uh, but that's not quite true. It's just that we have to be a little bit more refined when we talk about these things. And the good news is that we've now built up the tools we need to do this uh, using the language of initial algebras from category theory that we have. So we can do that. Uh, we can use that to actually also talk about infinite types. So let's see how this works. Um, so we start from what we know, which was this idea of initial algebras, right? And you might have noticed that these are finite things, right? And why is that? Well, because an algebra in general was something which had this type, right? So we have some type X and then we have some functor F and some way of constructing elements in X by looking at things from, from these arguments of the constructor. So sometimes you could have just a base case and sometimes you can also refer to the X, right? Um, but the point is that we're really thinking of the elements here as constructed. This is the constructor for x, right? And the reason that we are allowed to do that is that because if this is the initial algebra, that means that if we have any other algebra like this, then we should get a unique map, which is usually called fold, which goes from x into y, such that it preserves the structure, which means that this diagram commutes, right? Um, so that means that this x here has to be as small as possible because there has to be a fold to every other y. So if you make the x too large, then you wouldn't be able to make such a structure preserving map into a smaller y. So you have to only put things in here that you have to in order to be closed under this constructor. Right. Um, so it's not finite in the sense that there's finitely many elements, but it's finite in that every element is described by finitely many applications of con. Um, so that's not good if you want to describe an operating system, right? Uh, so what we do is we take this idea of finite things and we turn it on its head. So we are just turning all the arrows the other way around. So starting with an x, and now instead of having a function into x, we look at functions out of x. And we're thinking of these things as the observations that we can make of x. So this is the observations of x. So we don't know that every element here is is constructed from these observations, but we know that everything we can tell about x, we can tell by observing it using this function here. Right. And then the point is that even if x is, contains elements that can't be finitely described, we could always describe what it means to observe one step of them. Right. So a good example to keep in mind is if we have an infinite tree, then we could always observe the root of the tree and that it has some subtrees, and then we can choose one of these subtrees, and we can observe the root of that, and that it has some subtrees, 
and then we can choose a root uh, subtree observe the root of that we see that it has some subtrees we can observe another root and we can keep going like this and it doesn't matter if this tree is infinitely deep right because we can always make these observations as often as we want um, so that that's a good example to keep in mind uh, okay so this is what it means to be a final this is what it means to be a co-algebra and it's co because it's an algebra but the morphism here goes the other way right um, and now to say that it's a final co-algebra means that we also dualize the initial bit here right? and the initial bit here was the fact that you had this morphism to every other thing so now we should dualize it which means that if i have another thing f of y y some way of observing that y uh, then we should get a map into x so before we had a map out of x right but now we have a map into x instead uh, and this is usually called the unfold of f this was called the fold right? and again we want this to preserve the structure so we still want that this diagram should commute Yeah, should still commute just like this is commuting right yeah. okay so this gives us a way of making functions into the final co-algebra so we can that way we, we get functions into it so that's the opposite of what we had before where we had functions out of it right so this was like pattern matching and we're going to see that this is like co-pattern matching that we have already seen so it's a nice dual there okay we're going let's see how this looks in Agda in the next video.